Welcome to the Plato Paradigm, a paradigm shift in reading Plato's dialogues. Episode 124, Mino 89E, 290A. We may suspect that Socrates mentioned the lack of teachers of virtue for a reason. We may not have guessed that this was because another person has entered the conversation. Well, he hasn't quite entered the conversation, but he has sat down within speaking distance. And it's worth noting that this is someone who would not normally be considered to be a teacher of virtue. From details dropped during the conversation, we will find out that this person is Minos Xenos in Athens, the host of Mino in Athens. So it's not surprising that this person happens to be in the vicinity. His name is Anitos, and he is an Athenian citizen, obviously, since he is the Xenos of Mino in Athens. What is not stated in the dialogue obviously, is that he will be behind the prosecution of Socrates. I say that this is obviously not mentioned because Socrates is still alive, he is still before that prosecution, no one has particularly thought about it yet in the drama. But Plato has written the dialogue after the trial, after Socrates was killed, So we may expect a few hints towards that trial and Socrates' death. In this dialogue, the emphasis is on virtue and teaching, and in particular, the teaching of arete, virtue. This would not have been the reason for Anitas supporting the prosecution of Socrates. We would have to look for another reason, and there is a very likely reason. Anitas was the leader of the radical democrats who chased out the aristocrats whom Sparta had installed in Athens after the Peloponnesian War, and Socrates had been identified with those aristocrats. Obviously, Socrates himself wasn't an aristocrat, but he was often seen in the company of those aristocrats, and he was believed to have influenced the way they think. Therefore, Democrats felt that he was a traitor, but they couldn't accuse him of being an aristocrat or even influencing them, that wouldn't stand in court, which is why they had trumped up charges that he made new gods and believed in new gods, didn't believe in the old gods, and that he corrupted the youth, whatever that means. We shouldn't impose that trial on the content of this dialogue. But it is interesting that Anitas is the one behind the prosecution of Socrates. At the moment, however, Socrates is just talking about teachers of virtue. Polakis kunze ton e tines eien autes didaskaloi pantapoion u dunamai hiren. At any rate, searching many times if any would-be teachers of it, or that is of virtue, doing all things I am unable to find. We don't have to take this seriously. This is for Mino's benefit. It's not as if Socrates wants someone else to tell him about virtue. This is what Mino understands by a teacher of virtue. When Socrates interrogates people, it's for their benefit, not his own. Kaitoi metapolon getzeto, kaituton malista husan oio mai emperotatus enaitu pragmatos. Indeed, I search with many, 
And those, above all, whom I would think are the most experienced in this subject. Socrates says that he searches with many rather than he searches many as if the people he talks with will help him discover other people who are teachers. On the other hand, he does say that these people, the ones he searches with, are the ones he thinks are most experienced in the matter, and you would think that the ones most experienced in the matter would be the best teachers. It doesn't really matter anyway because Socrates isn't being serious, but he is raising the expectations of Mino. Mino thinks surely there must be people who are experienced in virtue, who could teach virtue. Why hasn't Socrates found anyone? Kaide kainun o menon eskalon he min anitos hode parikathezeto ho metadomen tes zeteseos. And indeed, now, Mino, just at the right time, Escalon literally means to a fine thing, but it means at the right time here. Anitas here, this Anitas, sat down next to us. With whom? Let us share the search. Suddenly we find a few things out all at once. Mino and Socrates have been sitting all this time. We might have thought of them as standing, and when Socrates was talking with his slave, they could have been standing, and Socrates was using a long stick. But possibly even then, Socrates was sitting. The slave may have been standing in front of him, which would mean that the slave saw everything upside down. Or Socrates could have got up and stood with the slave. Or the slave, which is a very bad idea, sat down next to Socrates. We don't know anything about Mino's entourage, whether they're standing or sitting or how far away they are. It sounds as though they were listening because Mino managed to call the slave over. And now we have... Anitos, and he has come to sit down next to them. In fact, he has already sat down, and that means he has been listening to the last few things Socrates has said, which are that he hasn't managed to find a teacher of virtue. The way Socrates suggests that they should share the search with Anitos, makes it sound like he's going to be another of the people with whom Socrates looks for teachers, as if Socrates isn't going to interrogate Anitos. We should also wonder why Socrates would interrogate Anitos while he's still interrogating Mino, trying to get Mino to understand virtue. Could it be that by talking with Anitus, Socrates expects Mino to begin to understand something? Is Plato hinting here that when Socrates talks to people in earlier dialogues and there are people around, that Socrates possibly is teaching the crowd rather than the interlocutor? or both at the same time in different ways. Ekotos dan metadoimen. We would share reasonably. We may understand that Socrates is about to tell us why it's a good idea to have Anitus in their discussion about teachers of virtue. Given what Socrates has already said about the people he chooses to discuss this thing with, he must be very experienced in virtue. Here's the first part of Socrates' description of Anitus. Anitus garhode protonmen esti patros plus iute kaisofu anthemionos, 
os egenetro plusios, uc apotu automatu, ude dontos dinos, os per honu neostiele forsta polipcratus, chrematais menias hothebaios, ala te hautu sofiec te samenos caepimelea. For this here anitos is first of all of a father, both rich and expert, and Themion, who became rich not spontaneously or by someone giving him in the way that the Thebian Ismenias has recently taken the money of Polycrates, but rather having acquired by his own expertise and attention. A scholion, or an ancient note on this passage, tells us that Anthemion was a tanner, so he was a man who made his money from tanning, and he was an expert at it, as Socrates keeps emphasizing. He had Sophia in tanning, although Socrates himself doesn't tell anyone what Anthemion did. In the context of teaching virtue, it might sound as though Anitas's father was an expert in general and made his money. He sounds a bit like a sophist. Socrates compares Anthemion with someone else called Ismenius the Thebian. Ismenius the Thebian was a member of the Democratic Party in Thebes, and there seems to have been a rumour that he was bribed either by Athenians or just by Polycrates, who was an Athenian citizen. And so, according to Socrates, Ismenius became rich, having acquired money from Polycrates. This may be a bit of an exaggeration, but we simply don't know. So when Socrates says that Anthemion didn't become rich spontaneously or because someone gave him, the giving part is bribing. And he's saying that Anitas' father wasn't bribed. He became rich as a tanner, which is quite good. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're talking about Anitas. Why is it a good idea to sit down with Anitas to discuss the teaching of virtue? We haven't heard anything about Anitus. Why is Anitus a good person? Well, the fact is we haven't finished the sentence. The sentence will carry on, and we'll get to that next time, and we'll learn even more about Anitus's father. <laughs>